Sitaram Yachuri, leader of the CPM and the man who led the individual initiative to try and reach out to the separatists. A rather big newsmaker on the show tonight. The big picture. Do you believe that the initiative that you made was, would you qualify it as a tiny beginning or would you say it was a waste of time? No, it was a good beginning. I mean, the reason is you, you look at the big picture. I mean, why are we here? We had asked for this delegation two months ago. The fact that it took two long months before we came, but okay, nevertheless, we've come now. Yeah. And a lot of water has passed in the meanwhile. And if we had come earlier, I think there would have been a lot more gains. Mm. But what was our objective? Number one. Number one, we come here to tell the people of Kashmir that we sympathize with their agonies, their suffering. We want that to end. We want normalcy to return, secondly. But that normalcy cannot return unless you have a political dialogue with all the stakeholders without any preconditions. Mm. Unconditional. Unconditional political dialogue. But that would mean, first step of that would mean to resolve the present impasse and the crisis. The second would be that it will contribute to the longer, long-term political resolution of the, of the problem in Kashmir. Mm. Now, this is the overall big picture, mm. these three major objectives. Yeah. Now, in part of that was that outreach to everybody saying that, yes, we are here as, the, as members of the Indian Parliament to talk with all stakeholders without any and preconditions, unconditional political dialogue. But did that message go out? Because the outreach was mostly led by opposition MPs, not by either the ruling alliance here or the ruling government in Delhi. They didn't stop you. But they were not the ones at the forefront of this initiative. So the Huryat may have thought, okay, these are not the guys with the real power. Well, it happened the same way in 2010. When too, you were part of exactly. leading the initiative. So, so at that time also, it was not the government of that day, you know, which was the UPA government. Yeah. But we went out, I went out and met uh, Gilani, uh, Gilani Saab, and then we had a talk. I mean, a talk. Yeah. That's about it, but the ice was broken. Yeah. But immediately after that, you had more than what, nearly 120 youth died in the stone pelting incidents. Yeah, yeah. But then the ice melted, you came back to normalcy, six years down the line. You had interlocutors appointed, they Which gave a report. That report never made it to parliament. And, and, and that is the problem. You see, when you come here, you come here when there's a situation. A crisis. You, you, a crisis, you come to and you try and resolve it, you move forward. But then it's not actually taken forward. But first give me a sense of what happened in your different meetings. Let's start with Mr. Gilani. Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani was the most hostile in response. You actually had to contend with pro-Pakistan anti-India slogans. You had to pretty much make your way out of there with the door not even opened for you. Yeah. Haseeb Drabu, uh, the finance minister speaking about this says, this is a complete betrayal of Kashmiri values. We believe in social graces. He went against the grain of Kashmiri. Were you insulted? Did you feel humiliated as, a, as, as an Indian politician? How did you see it? I mean, they were, I didn't feel either insulted or humiliated. Really? I, yes, I, I'll tell you why. I went there to convey to the people of Kashmir that here are Indian parliament, parliament members who are making this effort to out, of outreach. Yeah. I went to his door, hmm. the same door I went in 2010 yes. when we met. But he opened the door then yeah, and he didn't yeah, open he, it this time. This time, I told him, last time you gave me, uh, you know, black tea hmm. because you said there was no sugar and milk because of the curfew. Hmm. I said, we are, you know, I come from, I've been elected to the parliament from Bengal. We are used to drinking what is called lal cha in Bengal. Hmm. Hmm. So, you, I mean, let us have that. So, all that happened last time. But this time he said, we have decided collectively that we will not meet or talk to any members of this delegation. Who did he convey the message through uh, when you were at his residence? The police I, I, or who, who carried this message? Somebody I'm, came I'm, out I'm, and told you. No, somebody, I mean, he sent somebody out with uh, saying a personal message for Yachuri Sahib. But what were the slogans you heard around his no, house? No, the pro-Pakistan slogans? Second, so. you see, initially there was no problem at all. Yeah. But as we stayed there for a longer time, oh. I mean, which we should have moved out uh, earlier. Yeah. The longer time, there were no Pakistani slogans I heard of, but I heard slogans of Azadi. Yeah. Azadi was clearly yes. there. Yeah. But there were only a few handful of people. Yeah. But then they will slow, slowly collect. I mean, that's yeah. how it uh, happens uh, here. Yes. So they would have definitely collected. But that is not the issue. The issue is we went and met uh, Yasin Malik. 
What did he say? Well, Yasin Malik, I mean... The, you the, met him at a police station. So, this is also one all, of those only all, in Kashmir all, moments. All, all, all of them we met, either at their homes or in some other place. Yeah, that under was, detention. Uh, where, where it was under the police, uh, you know, custody, yeah. protect, protection, whatever it is. Yeah. Yasin Malik, Shabir Shah, Professor uh, uh, Wani. Professor Bhatt, yeah. Uh, Bhatt, Professor yeah. Bhatt, Wani Bhatt. Hmm. And uh, 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 this uh, Sayyid Mir Vais. Mir Vais. Yes. All the four we met. And and all of them were very cordial. I mean, they know our positions. They've all known uh, the, what we stand you for. You had your longest meeting with the Mirwais, who initially, when Mr. Ovesi tried to meet him, because I was there, uh, we, uh, Asad came out in a few minutes. Then you and Sharad Yadav and others went back. You were in there, I think, for 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, more than 20 minutes. So that's almost like a meeting. Well, we exchange. Uh, we exchanged a lot of information. We have known each other earlier, and uh, we've also talked about the actual situation here. What did he but, say? Uh, about that, you see, I'm working for a solution. Mm. So you help me to get to the solution. Mm. If you go on asking me at every stage, what, who said what, who said what, we are not going to reach a solution. Okay, what is the impression that you can share at this time, which doesn't hurt? the attempts to put together you see, some I sort can, of dialogue. I can understand the Hurriyat taking a decision saying that they do not want to discuss now because yes, there is a feeling we are also, I mean, cut up two months. Mm. I mean, it took, it took for the Indian parliamentary response. Mm. I mean, I mean, this it's it's long, you know, and and what reason, nobody knows. Mm. Now, now here, what what is the road map that the government of India has? Parliamentarians may have yes. something, but what is the roadmap of the government of India? Mm. That is what we have questioned the government in the parliament, if you recollect the entire uh, discussion that mm. took place there. We came to a common unanimous resolution, which talked of everything that, that we are talking of now. Yeah. Subsequently, the prime minister, mm. after many, many weeks, mm. finally went out and said, and now he has said, what is required is development and confidence, mm. faith. And trust. Trust. Yeah. Now, that is exactly, if you remember what I spoke in the parliament, what is happening is a huge trust deficit with the... Talking about trust does not, I mean, produce it from, from, from the sky. But, no, did but Yasin, trust has to be created. No? But did Yasin Malik say to you, as Sharad Yadav said later, that we will talk to you in Delhi? Karenge. Because to me, that sounds like, invite us for talks to Delhi. You see, all of them have come to our offices in, uh, in Delhi earlier. Yeah. And we have discussed many a time all these issues. The point is we have been telling them that since 1948, since the accession of the state of Jammu and Kashmir to Indian Union, it is a state of India. Mm. Now, we are prepared as a left, what we stated publicly yesterday. People today talk about we have to go back to 52, 53, etc. We said, no, let's go back to 48, the accession of the state to the Indian uh, Union. Mm. From then onward, it's an integral part yes. of India yes. from that accession. Yes. From 48, let's revisit. Where all, what are the promises and assurances that were betrayed? Or let's say not fulfilled. Or what happened? I mean, how the erosion in Article 370 took place? Mm. How to uh, reverse that erosion? So would you be uh, on... As, as, as a left leader in support of the pre-53 position and I ask you this because Omar Abdullah raised an interesting point of the all-party delegation and, and, he, and he came out later and he said, I said if you're not even willing to discuss autonomy, a resolution that has been passed by two-thirds of the assembly, what is the purpose of talking to the Hurriyat who actually wants Azadi? So at some point, parliamentarians and parliament has to make up its mind what is delhi prepared to discuss precisely that is what we are asking the delhi government delhi government means government of india yes you know in fact we have been very strong critics of the fact that at that time the resolution of the jnk assembly was not even discussed by the parliament and the, we were supposed to we were supposed resolution. to that yes. was the promise you made yes that was the promise you made to uh, the jnk yeah. that you pass your resolution We'll discuss that there, and on that basis, we'll move forward. Mm. But that discussion itself never took place. Mm. Now, that, see, this is the problem. This, this trust deficit comes from a string, string of, of promises betrayed. But would you advocate 
greater autonomy and would you say that we can actually turn the clock back as many Kashmiri politicians want and go back to a pre-53 position? You see, the point is, let us, what I'm saying is, let us revisit from 48. The terms on which the accession happened. From there on, let us revisit these 70 years. And you're saying there's a historic betrayal. Is no, yeah, these 70 years, let us see. And, and, and it's very easy to find out when, what what happened. What happened. Yeah. And then how do you reverse what is there in Article 370, which is which has actually been eroded. Now, you said I was neither insulted nor angry at how Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani responded. What was your response or your emotion? What adjective would you use? I said I felt it is actually uh, unfortunate that they took this position. Because what are we doing? We want that outreach. We are telling the people of Kashmir, we are willing to meet anybody, everybody. So you if are you're... saying that, but do you believe when you went today, because you discussed it at the all-party delegation, the group knew that you were going to go. Were you A, disappointed that more people were not ready to be part of your initiative? Who Did you go on behalf of yourselves or do you think you're acting also as a bridge between the government and the separatists? You see, there were many other members of parliament who wanted to come. But going by my last time's experience, yes. I mean, the larger the group doesn't really make much, uh, you know. I mean, you require a certain cohesion, much larger time, which is not available. Mm. So a more compact group would, have, would be better. Yeah. And that's why you saw the group that was there. But know, did you have know. the backing of the all-party group in meeting the Huryat? Well, we, we, they, nobody objected. Mm. Nobody objected. That much I can say definitely. Mm. But, but we said that, yes, I'd go. That's what I said last time as well and when we went. Mm. And again, the same thing, nobody objected then. So the point is, you see, you tell me, here are people who are suffering from a trust deficit. What is our job, you and I, etc.? I mean, anyone uh, from uh, Delhi or mm. the government, then how do you address the trust deficit? Now, here I am, I, as an Indian parliamentarian, saying that I'm willing to talk to anybody, everybody, without any conditions, unconditional talks. I'm not setting any agenda. You come and tell me. But if there is no national consensus, and I, and I, and I want to push you further and question actually what the purpose of the all-party delegation is, because this is also a question that some Kashmiri politicians are raising. In fact, uh, the national conference said that we even told them that, you know, your credibility is very low right now as a group. Uh, do, you, do you concede that maybe more homework needed to be done before you all came here, that there needed to be a plan, that there needed to be some back channeling. Was any of that done? Unfortunately, no. And even the question of whom to call, whom to meet, etc. Some degree of consultations which ought to have been there, that also didn't take place. So you're saying it was ill-prepared? No, you know, in the sense, I think the government was also finally forced after the Prime Minister's statement or the PMO statement which came after the opposition mm. party's delegation from here, went and met him. Yes. When he, for the first time, when he talked of saying that we'll talk to all the stakeholders. Yes. And then when he talked about this Vishwas and uh, mm. Vikas. Vikas, yes. You know, I mean, all these things. So that was then not not going in a delegation was, was becoming untenable for the government. So I think that's why this happened. Now, that's what I said in the beginning. This should have happened two months ago. And then, even without homework, if you had come at that point of time, it could have worked. It, 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 but it did you come worked. without homework today? Well, to, to to a large extent, some homework they they have done, which is why some delegations have, uh, came and met us here. But I think a lot more could have been done. And now we have been told that once we go back, we'll sit down again, take a review meeting, and then decide on how to proceed forward. Now you had been the one really pushing for a letter of invite to be sent <coughs> to the Korea much <coughs> earlier. You told the Home Minister that. That invite finally went from Mehbooba Mufti, but in her capacity as PDP President. How did you read that? Well, I thought it was a sort of a compromise <laughs> that was made, mm. where the Government of India should have sent it, but if they didn't... You believe it should have gone from the centre? And if they didn't, then the Government of JNK should have sent it. Mm. But it went as the President of a, you know, of the ruling party, I mean, or part, part of the ruling coalition. Mm. And how do you invite them to come when they are all in custody, mm. some form or the other. Mm. So the, the point is the arrangement has to be made by the state, no?
but there is a there is a counter narrative uh, mr yachuri and that counter narrative has come from some bjp ministers from some commentators who argue that the situation today uh, and and one minister used this phrase he said the autonomists and the humanists are now irrelevant we are now dealing with islamists and there is one argument that this is radicalized youth this is islamized youth this is no longer about azadi this has become about religious extremism <coughs> this has become also about pakistani flags we've all seen the pictures how do you then bring a humanist approach to it you see the point is okay even if you grant all of that is truth yeah i don't believe that's the truth the whole truth but even if you grant the, that is the truth how do you approach it how do you approach it yeah. it cannot be done unless you have an open political dialogue with all of them yeah. and in the process isolate those from the people yeah. who are actually talking of things which are not acceptable yeah. under the terms of the accession of the state to india yeah. you know that that is the objective so even if that is true even that would require a political engagement no yeah. so whether islamism whether azadi uh, sentiments whatever it is what about uh, muzaffar beg who says there's not just kashmiriyat there's also pakistaniyat here now <laughs> and the fact is that uh, you know there are rallies in south kashmir which have been addressed by armed militants there have been pakistani we can deny it all we want in delhi but there are pakistani flags in areas of the hinterland yeah is that new worker no i mean I but, w, but you know but the point but is but more intensified and amplified correct, this time for correct, sure correct if you are not solving the problem they are getting more intensified and that's exactly what the analogy, analogy i drew in the parliament it says it's like a vulture that smells blood comes down to feed on a dead carcass the blood is being spilt here no what is your prescription now to the government after you having met these separatists you had a long conversation with them you're not sharing some of those details but <laughs> what is your take away based on these conversations what would you say i'll tell to you the two things we want this government now or three things i'll say three things in the sense we want this government now first of all immediately upon return of this resolution announce certain confidence building like measures. stop this pellet guns okay. we've taken up with the home minister he said they are getting this pepper chili mm. or whatever it is yeah, uh, a, new, sure. a new orders have been placed for those cartridges that is that is one secondly you immediately all those who have who, whose families have lost uh, their children or injured etc to give proper compensation and the proper treatment mm. and their rehabilitation mm. thirdly if there are any excesses that are committed those must be investigated and proceeded against fourthly on afspa from the civilian areas the supreme court is clear we have withdrawn it from tripura i mean without anybody asking us to do it Uh, and the, the the point is from civilian areas you withdraw it and fifthly there are so many pending projects which need to be implemented so that generate some employment opportunity here yeah. i mean these five measures which which uh, nobody can disagree yeah they're not contentious yeah, they're, at all they're all so why didn't the government now well on pellet guns the, for, the crpf has not fully accepted this but point. unless they get the alternative no we are talking about an increased violence they say the crowds are more violent than before there are buildings for example the district administration and anantnag's office was burnt down yeah, no. police stations are being burned pelters are now you know those using stone they're not scared of us anymore i've actually heard soldiers saying that they also say nobody speaks for us no no we do i mean when when what we said i mean everywhere i speak i say i say 70 civilians and three uh, security personnel yes i mean they are also our youth yeah yeah the the these kashmiri youth and security or who yeah are you i mean they're the same age age group yeah. i mean that is why why this loss of life you tell me honestly it just i mean if you just put down your head and think about it number 1 government announced this confidence building measures yeah. these five yeah number 2 st- give an open invitation saying that yes unconditional talks we are prepared for the you went to talk today they didn't even listen but the government has to do yeah. the government should do yeah that that the, the, this is this so is so does the bjp tell you at this delegation meeting that it's ready to do that it's in their alliance agreement but, but it's not happening in conclusion having not met one separatist but having met at least all the others and spoken to them briefly what would you say is their mood do you believe if an institutional mechanism is put into place you could bring them to the dialogue table because there's one view that even they are in danger of losing 
their relevance and losing control over the street. So soon we may have nobody to talk to here. Precisely. Therefore, what is my constituency? What is my objective? People of Kashmir. My effort is to remove the trust deficit that they have. Yeah. How do I do it? If these are the leaders, some may consider, some may not consider. Yeah. But I'll talk to them. If there are some other leaders, we'll talk to them I'll too. talk to them. And let the people get the confidence that here is somebody who's making some, I mean, who means business, and they're taking it forward. Once people's confidence you earn, the rest become irrelevant. Well, some would say, Sita Ram Yachuri, that you and the others uh, have done what governments should have been doing, long back, full credit to you for that initiative, even if it hit a wall at Sayyid Ali Shah Gilani's uh, no, but, residence. But I, I'm glad that we send the message across to the people of Kashmir. Thank you very much for talking to us. Thank you. Thank you.